The market has a law of its own and the progression unfolds in waves, as R. N. Elliott called each price action swing. In a dominant trend, progress ultimately takes the form of five waves, which are labeled with numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Three of these swings, which are 1, 3, and 5, actually affect the overall direction in favor of the dominant trend. These swings are known as motive waves, also called impulses. Within the five wave sequence, the three waves which unfold in favor of the dominant trend are separated by two counter trend interruptions, which are labeled as two and four. These swings represent a temporary interruption of the impulse waves, hence the reason why they are called corrective waves. Simply put, the wave principle states that the full cycle is formed out of eight swings and that the market moves within five waves in the direction of the main trend and then with three waves against it. Once the impulse phase is complete, then the trend corrective legs unfold and act as a pullback labeled with letters A, B and C. Time for some facts and bullet points. Price action moves in patterns and usually has the magic number set to 3 and 5. A bullish or bearish Elliott cycle is formed out of 3 impulsive waves, numbers 1, 3 and 5, and 2 corrective waves, number 2 and 4. These waves, as the name implies, they correct the impulsive 1 and 3. All this is followed by the trend corrective legs, which are A, B and C. So, if you don't want to complicate things, you can apply the basic usage of the theory. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, A, B, C. Simple, right? But it's not that simple, if only it would be. If you aspire for an accuracy higher than 60-70%, then I would definitely recommend the advanced technique. Impulsive or corrective waves are usually formed out of other Elliott waves as they are fractal by nature. What I mean by this is the fact that you will find an Elliott wave within a larger Elliott wave due to the fact that each wave contains subwaves. Impulse wave 3 is usually the strongest swing, but sometimes number 5 can be just as strong. This is because traders take profit on the third impulsive wave, and then after the fourth retracement wave, they get in again on the fifth impulsive wave. Or simply put, Traders got used to the Elliott method and this is why the fifth wave tends to have a bigger impact on the charts lately, especially in the commodity markets. Most of the times impulse 3 contains an extension, which would imply impulse 5 to have the same length as impulse 1. Corrective waves 2 and 4 can have two forms, simple, form there are 3 moves, and complex, form there are 5 moves. And if wave 2 is simple, then wave 4 will be complex and vice versa, due to the law of alternation. Usually corrective wave 2 unfolds with zigzag structure. Sometimes, on rare occasions, the C corrective wave can transcend into impulse wave 1. Wave C always unfolds with a 5 wave sequence. Wave B and wave X always unfold with a free wave sequence and are known to be the cause of market uncertainty, fake breakouts or even structure change. ABC correctives can provide a strong gain depending on the size of the impulse waves. This is because at the end of the fifth wave divergences occur giving traders the possibility to spot the difference in the price action. For example, in an uptrend, a new high would be created while the volumes would decrease, meaning that bulls push the market higher, but they are not justifying a continuation with enough liquidity, leaving room for bears to take over. When the market goes into a correction, the correction itself would often end its first swings inside the price action territory of the previous wave 4 of a lesser degree. This is valid exclusively for a wave 4, which would end in the territory of the previous wave 4 within the main impulse 3. Now, let's move a bit towards the wave numbering and the default measurements.